Plato is one of the most representative philosophers of ancient Greece, belonging to its classical period, and he is one of the most known philosophers of all time. He was one of the first thinkers who addressed the concept of soulmate. For Plato, a soulmate is someone with whom we feel a very strong affinity, and the love we feel for that person goes beyond physical attraction. A soulmate is someone with whom we can be ourselves, in our complete nature. For Plato, romantic love is deemed to be of a higher metaphysical and ethical status than sexual or physical attractiveness alone. The idea of romantic love initially emerged from the platonic concept of love as a deep affection, through which we can contemplate the real beauty of our being and that of the world around us. This beauty is not limited to physical beauty, but also involves a spiritual kind of beauty, Plato calling it the form of beauty. For Plato, the love of beauty culminates in the love of philosophy, the subject that pursues the highest capacity of thinking. Plato was born into an aristocratic and influential family, and he founded the Academy, the first institution of higher learning in the entire Western world. Along with Socrates, his mentor, and Aristotle, his student, Plato is one of the most influential individuals in the entire history of humankind. It can even be said that he is one of the pylons of Western civilization. As far as we know, almost all of his work has survived the last 2,400 years, remaining very popular the entire time. Some of his most famous books include The Republic, The Symposium, the Apology of Socrates, Allegory of the Cave, and The Dialogues of Plato. So, keeping his teachings in mind, in this video we bring you five ways to help you find your soulmate from the philosophy of Plato. Number 1. Believe that there is a soulmate for you. Plato said, Love is born into every human being. It calls back the halves of our original nature together. It tries to make one out of two and heal the wound of human nature. According to Greek mythology, in the beginning we were androgynous beings. In the Symposium, through the words of Aristophanes, Plato described that in the beginning we had four arms, four legs, and a head with two faces. Fearing our power, Zeus split us into two separate parts, condemning us to spend our lives in search of our other halves. Because of this split, we are severely wounded, which makes us desire to find our other half in order to become whole and to prevent any further suffering. This desire is what we call love, a desire to reunite with the other part of ourselves. This wound can also be seen in a metaphoric way, in our culture of consumerism, we look for satisfaction in things that cannot provide real or lasting fulfillment. These false lures include material goods, power, and fame. Instead of denying this longing, this wound, we'd be better off accepting it. According to Aristophanes, if there is a soulmate and we don't recognize its existence, we might neglect this wound, pretend it's not there, chase unfulfilling goals, get involved in random relationships, or stop believing in true love, resulting in an ultimately unhappy life. That being so, a life devoted to any of these goals becomes quite miserable and empty. Thus, the first step in finding your other half is to believe that you have a soulmate, that your longing has purpose. If we recognize its existence, we're that much more likely to be more careful and deliberate when we choose our partner. If you know there's someone out there who compliments you perfectly, then jumping into or staying in a relationship simply for the sake of being in that relationship becomes a markedly less attractive proposition. It's important to have an idea of the form of love you want to experience, how it should make you feel, what kind of qualities the other person should have that can resonate with your character. Throughout his work, Plato argues that focusing on an ideal version of something is one of the most useful kinds of thought exercise we could practice. If you knew what something was truly like in its ideal form, you would then know what you need to do in order to improve or reach there. 
You can start by making a list of traits and values you think you would enjoy in your ideal partner. Perhaps you're attracted to a similar sense of humor, or someone who's athletic and into sports, or maybe someone who holds strong political beliefs. No matter what the trait is, consider how you might be able to embody that trait yourself. If you work on yourself in this way, qualities that you find attractive, then you increase your chances of meeting somebody who shares your outlook and values. You shouldn't settle down until you find your soulmate. For example, before settling down with somebody you're attracted to, but have no idea of their other, less overt character traits, give it a few more months. Spend time living together if at all possible, until you make sure they're really the one, and then take things to the next stage. The longer you cement a relationship, the harder it becomes to break up. Caution is thus a golden rule when it comes to relationships. It can prevent you from making rash decisions in life, which could leave you even more wounded. Heal your wounds first. Work on developing yourself. Retain and recall that list of qualities you look for in a potential partner, and continue to commit yourself to the same standard. Do this, and you'll be much better equipped to spot and avoid a potentially bad relationship. Number 2. Cultivate Friendship According to Plato, he whom love touches not, walks in darkness. For Plato, the best kind of philia, or friendship, is that which lovers can have for each other. Therefore, for Plato, love is the best kind of friendship, and it's important for it to be the basis of any relationship. Plato considered that to live for truth and authenticity is what really matters, and through friendship and love, we can get inspired to follow such ideals. Where there is friendship and honesty in relationships, there might be true love. Aristophanes in Symposium emphasizes that if everybody found his or her soulmate, the world would be at its happiest. A soulmate should first be a friend, then a lover, somebody with whom you can share your joy and troubles. The best situation is when the two partners share the same values and principles in life. Or, if not, at least they should respect the other's opinion or way of living. It's highly important to cultivate friendship and respect inside a romantic relationship from the start. When built on a solid foundation of friendship, a relationship can last a lifetime. A real soulmate would never intentionally cause you deep suffering and despair. A soulmate is supposed to make you happier and more confident in yourself to overcome life's challenges. When we engage in a relationship, it's important to observe whether or not the partner is really your friend. Do they make you feel more powerful and able to overcome life's challenges? Or do they give you sleepless nights, worries, anxiety, and make you feel unworthy of respect and love? Don't settle for a relationship which brings you down, which causes you harm. This is especially important for toxic relationships, when one of the partners feels abused but still feels they can't leave. In such cases, it's better to contact a professional to help you navigate through such situations. Always go towards friendship and happiness. The successful relationships are not those of mad passion and destructive tendencies, but those that are built steadily, that look mundane on the outside, based on friendship and mutual respect. Number 3. Feel safe, like you belong. To quote Plato, The two are struck from their senses by love, by a sense of belonging to one another, and by desire, and they don't want to be separated from one another, not even for a moment. Being two parts of a whole, the partners would feel a strong feeling of belonging. After endless searching, they finally found one another, and they don't want to spend another moment apart. Plato, through Aristophanes, affirmed that Eros, the Greek god of erotic love, is the best friend of men, the helper and the healer of ills. It is the power of love that makes us feel whole again. Having our being reunited, we feel more at home 
more secure and loved, and this positive feeling can heal our wound caused by the split made by Zeus. When we're separated, we feel kind of lost, having only one side, like a flat fish in the words of Aristophanes. Only when we find our soulmate can we get that sense of belonging or feeling at home. Also, when we have such a connection with our partner based on friendship, we'll try to be gentle with them. We'd not be capable of betraying, lying or manipulating. Real love empowers us to see the good in each other. Such a partnership is like refinding yourself. A soulmate can make you feel like you're authentically yourself. You feel comfortable and safe. It's not like a relationship from a Hollywood movie full of conflict and drama. It looks more mundane. A soulmate doesn't judge you harshly or let you be yourself and feel comfortable and confident in your own skin. They'd never criticize you in a malicious way and they would not prefer your absence over your presence. Well, most of the time anyway. As fulfilling as it can be being together, it's vital to any successful relationship to give each other space and personal time as well, to respect each other, to not interfere negatively with other areas of their lives. For example, when they have to work extra hours at their job, you need to be understanding of their situation. Or if there's an event around one of their hobbies that you don't share, having the confidence to let them go on their own and indulge their passions can be hugely beneficial to a happy relationship. If we don't do things apart, how will we ever have new stories to tell each other? In order to avoid arguments, it's important to understand your partner's priorities in life. There will be moments when your partner has to focus on something else and you need to respect your partner's goals and lifestyle. The best support one can offer to their partner is a peaceful home where the other can return again and again to replenish their power, feel understood and loved. Therefore, try to talk to your partner, understand their short and long-term goals in their career, building a family, their personal interests and so on. Respect your partner's wishes and interests but don't forget to communicate yours as well. For example, suppose to get a promotion at work, your partner might need to work 10 hours a day plus weekends whilst also building their reputation on the side. Rather than sit at home stewing over being left alone only to explode into bitter argument, understand and respect their choice and find a solution of your own. Indulge in your hobbies, find local activities to do alone or with friends. Fill your time in ways that bring you happiness instead of arguing with your partner for not spending enough time with you. A home where your interests and goals are interwoven and that you're mutually accepting of helps in creating a peaceful home where both of you can feel that you belong, where both of you feel loved and respected. Number four, climb the ladder of love. Plato teaches us that evil is the vulgar lover who loves the body rather than the soul inasmuch as he is not even stable because he loves a thing which is in itself unstable. In the beginning, just after the split, humans were living miserably, feeling very hurt from the wound and wandering to find their other half. Zeus feeling guilty for splitting us in two transformed our body after the split, leading us to find physical pleasure in bonding with different people. Zeus turned our sexual organs to the front so we might achieve some satisfaction in embracing others, not only our other half. According to the mythology, because of the way Zeus made us, it's sometimes difficult to differentiate real love from physical attraction. Unfortunately, many people appear to live mostly on the physical level, as if corrupted by the body. When they love, they love mostly the physicality of their partner, not their personality. In Symposium, Diotima teaches Socrates what love means. She explains that real love is achieved by climbing through six steps of a ladder. There are many ways in which one can interpret these steps. Some say these six steps are six types of love. The first step of the ladder is a desire for physical features. 
An individual tends to get attracted to what is missing from their own body, like being attracted to someone's smile or the color of their partner's eyes. Then the second step is love for all bodies, which means realizing the physical beauty of others. An individual recognizes the physical features that he is attracted to and understands that many others can have that beauty. Many others can have that kind of smile or that color of eyes you're attracted to. Since bodies are so similar, it would be meaningless to see physical beauty in just one individual. From this, the next step up the ladder is to see the beauty that's beyond physical appearance. This step is called the love for souls. It can be achieved by appreciating the character or the soul of your romantic partner. At this stage, one can fall in love with a beautiful mind, even if it's in a body that you wouldn't typically find attractive. Then, the fourth step is known as love for laws and institutions, which means together becoming interested in achieving kindness and understanding of fellow human beings in the betterment of our society in a compassionate manner. The fifth step is called the love for knowledge. It is about realizing that there's knowledge to acquire everywhere and being interested in pursuing it in science, in understanding the laws of the universe. Then, the sixth step, which is sometimes called love for love itself, means appreciating the beauty of this world, and this appreciation and awe is what is called platonic love, which is to love the essence of what is really beautiful, the true reality of this world. True love occurs at this last step when you just love for love itself and don't expect anything in return. The soulmate is one of the easiest human beings to love without expecting anything in return. A soulmate can inspire you to climb this ladder of love, which is why it's so important to share the same values with your soulmate. When we learn to appreciate that the beauty of the soul is superior to the beauty of the body, we end up loving those who are beautiful in their soul, regardless of their physical appearance. According to Diotima's teachings, once you reach the higher level, you could never go back to the lower rungs. Although it's normal to love beautiful bodies at first, don't spend too many years there. Try to start giving attention to people who have a kind soul, whom you appreciate for who they are as a person. Don't just take a partner who's beautiful, but really dig deep into each other's personalities and work out if you fit well together, together. For example, ask important questions like, what brings you the most happiness? What makes you really angry? What's your biggest motivation in life? What's your biggest regret? What kind of friends do you have? What was the lowest point in your life? What are your principles and so on? By learning each other's answers and seeing each other's reactions, you can identify the real values you both hold and better understand their character. Once you learn to appreciate the souls of the people around you, it becomes that much easier for you to find your soulmate and to continue climbing the ladder of love. Number 5. Reignite the poetry in your relationships. In our final quote from Plato for this video, he says, At the touch of love, everyone becomes a poet. Love often seems like madness. In Phaedrus, Socrates says that although madness can be an illness, it can also be the source of man's greatest blessings. The madness of love can make everyone a poet, raising us to a higher level of existence from where we can admire the beauty of this world and feel inspired. When we're in love, we transform. We start to see more beauty around us. A sunset or the smell of a flower suddenly has a different meaning. Love gives us wings to fly to another level of existence, transforming the reality around us. Thus. We become poets when we're in love. We start to see beauty in everything. Many of us remember what first love felt like. Many of us have written poems to our loved ones when we were teenagers. The love from Aphrodite and Eros is such a kind of madness which inspires us to glorify every moment of our relationship.
However, as the years pass, we start to notice that we experience that rush of poetic inspiration less and less often. We become stuck in our mundane life. Eat, sleep, work, repeat. But the truth is, it's within this normalizing of one's relationship that the very best parts of it can flourish, or languish into nothing if not maintained. It becomes all too easy to stop appreciating the special moments with our loved ones. A forgotten anniversary here, an ignored achievement there. It can be hard to remember to appreciate the presence of our soulmate when we also have to dedicate our time to work and family. Therefore, we need to pay attention to when such inspiring poetic moments are missing from our life. Is the problem simply a lack of time or bad planning? Or are you actually, deliberately or subconsciously, avoiding making time for each other? If it's the latter, you may need to decide if your partner really is your soulmate. And if they are, you need to put more energy and focus into cultivating your relationship. Make plans just for the two of you regularly. Break the routine, reconnect, and openly appreciate each other often, reminding both of you just how much you matter and how special you are to each other.